for being here today. Oh, I see you've got a bubble. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Um, now I'm going to ask you a question. Um, have you seen those blue flowers that grow along the side of the road? Yeah. Have you seen those? Yes. Does anybody know what those are called? Do you know what those are called? Blue bonnets. Very good. Do you know? Um, last time when I was at the bank, we, there was like a lot of blue bonnets that we took a picture with them. Oh, that is so nice. I love that. That's so nice. There's blue bonnets. They grow alongside the road, and sometimes you see them out in the fields, you know. Um, now, those are a special flower. That's actually the Texas State Flower, okay? And there's a special story that talks about the blue bonnet. It's called the Legend of the Blue Bonnet. Now, this is a Native American story. Do you know who the Native Americans are? Anybody know who they are? The Native Americans are some of the first people that lived here in America a long time before anybody else came over here. They were the first people that lived here. So the story I'm going to tell you today comes from them, okay? It comes specifically from a group of people called the Comanches. Okay, so many years ago, a people called Comanche lived here in Texas, where we live. And the Comanche people relied on the land for everything. Their food, water, and shelter all came from the land. Now, one year, the land was unkind to the Comanche people. In the spring, thunderstorms came and flooded the earth. In the summer, a heat came that dried up most of the water. In the fall, a wind blew through the land and blew away much of what was left. And then in the winter, the land froze. By the next spring, the Comanche people hoped that things would be better, but then no rain fell. It was a drought. A lot of the water that the plants and animals needed to survive began to dry up, and the Comanche people were scared. So um, they decided that what they would do is they would do their rain dance for three days. They did a special dance to try to bring the rain from the sky. So for three days they did their rain dance, but nothing happened. Even worse, a sickness swept through the tribe, and many tribe members lost their families. So what happened was a medicine man, it was like a doctor, like a doctor, he was one of the oldest members of the tribe, he decided that he would go up, to the sacred hill and he would sit and wait and ask the great spirits to talk to him and tell him what they should do. So the medicine man went up to the sacred hill and the Comanche people waited anxiously to hear what would, what would, uh, what would happen, what the great spirits told the medicine man. There was a child in the tribe and her name was She Who Is Alone. They called her that because when the sickness swept through the land, she lost both of her parents. Now, she who was alone had a special doll. She had a special doll. And this doll was her only real possession, the only real thing she owned. She loved this doll so much, and it had beautiful blue feathers in its hair. And uh, it was made of white buckskin. And the dress, had, it was a beautiful dress with lots of beads. And she loved this doll. She took such good care of this doll. And whenever she felt nervous about what would happen with her tribe, she would hug her doll and whisper, it's okay. We'll be okay as long as we're together. So for two days, she who was alone and the rest of her tribe waited to hear what the medicine man would say. And finally, he came down from the sacred hill. But he had bad news. He said the great spirits had talked to him, but they said that the people were being selfish. They took from the land, but they didn't return to the land. They didn't take care of the land. So what they had to do was they had to take their most prized possessions, and they had to sacrifice them. They were going to take their most prized possessions, and they were going to burn them in a fire to show that they were sorry for how selfish they had been and that they would do better. So the Comanche people heard this, and they started to argue among themselves because nobody wanted to give up their most prized possession. One person said, oh, I know that the great spirits don't want my bow and arrow. No. And another said, no, no, I know that the great spirits don't want my beautiful white buckskin. And they continued to argue until it was time to go to bed. She who was alone walked back to her teepee with her doll. And she laid down 
and she started to think about her parents and how much she missed them. But then she thought about her people, the Comanche people, and how much she loved them. So laying there, she realized she knew what she had to do. She took her doll, she went to the communal flyer, she got a torch. She started to walk up to the sacred hill. Once she was up there, she gathered some twigs and she made a campfire. So standing there in front of the campfire, she looked down at her doll. She thought about how much she loved her people. And she said to her doll, I love you so much. You are my most prized possession, but I love my people more. I know that if I give you to the great spirits, they will forgive us and they will know that we are not selfish. So before she could change her mind, she asked the great spirits to accept her sacrifice and she threw her doll. She watched the fire until it was nothing but ashes, tears streaming down her face. When the fire had finally died down, she picked up the ashes and she threw them from the north to the south to the east and to the west. After all of this, she was so tired, so she lay down at the top of the hill and she went to sleep. The next morning when the sun rose in the sky, she who was alone woke up to see an amazing sight. Everywhere the ashes had fallen, there was a beautiful blue flower. She knew when she saw the flower that the great spirits had accepted her sacrifice and had forgiven her people. So she started to look around and then below her on the sacred hill, the people started to come out of their teepees and they saw this beautiful blue flower and they knew what she had done and that their sacrifice had been accepted. They started to do their rain dance and to thank the great spirits. And as they did, rain started to fall from the sky. So uh, from then on, she who was alone was called she who dearly loved her people. And she was remembered for saving her people from the great drought. Even today here in Texas, we can still see that blue flower as a reminder of her sacrifice and how much she loved her people. And what is that blue flower called? Blue bonnet. The blue bonnet. Very good. Oh, awesome job, ladies and gentlemen.